Hi there guys, today's talk is about the relationship between absolute humidity and relative humidity. Humidity is a measure of how much water there is in the atmosphere. Absolute humidity is the weight of water in the atmosphere compared with the volume and it's usually measured in grams per cubic meter. Relative humidity is donated by this symbol here and is a measure of the actual amount of water in the atmosphere compared with the maximum amount of water that that atmosphere or parcel of air can contain at that temperature and it's measured as a percentage. When a parcel of air contains its maximum amount of water that it can as water vapor we call that saturation point or dew point. This diagram donates a parcel of air at three different temperatures 2 degrees centigrade, 10 degrees centigrade and 20 degrees centigrade. The parcel of air is the same size in each case. However, the different size boxes donate the maximum amount of water that this parcel of air can hold at these three different temperatures. And here is a diagram showing this parcel of air at three different temperatures containing the maximum amount of water that that parcel can hold at each temperature. Generally the maximum amount of water which a parcel of air can hold is when it's at a relative humidity of 100 percent. We can see at the different temperatures the amount of water vapor contained changes with temperature. The light blue color donates the amount of water vapor contained in this parcel measured in grams which is known as the absolute humidity. A saturated parcel of air at 20 degrees centigrade can hold more water than a saturated parcel of air of the same size at 10 degrees centigrade. Likewise, a saturated parcel of air at 10 degrees centigrade holds more water than the same size parcel of air at 2 degrees centigrade. In other words, as we increase the temperature the ability for a parcel of air to hold more water increases. This diagram shows what happens to a parcel of air at a fixed temperature, in this case 2 degrees centigrade, if we increase the relative humidity as measured by a percentage. You can see as we increase the relative humidity the amount of water contained in this parcel of air goes up as donated by the light blue color uh, measured in grams. Generally an increase in relative humidity will result in an increase in absolute humidity. In this diagram here, we've kept the absolute humidity the same as represented by the blue areas. The three blue areas are the same volume. But we have increased the temperature 
and because we have increased the temperature the amount of water which each parcel is able to hold increases therefore the relative humidity of each parcel as measured as a percentage decreases or goes down in other words if we increase the temperature of a parcel of air its absolute humidity will stay the same but its relative humidity will decrease and this diagram shows what happens if we decrease the temperature of a parcel of air the ability for this parcel of air decreases or goes down as it gets colder and yet the amount of water in this parcel stays the same until dew point or saturation point is reached once saturation point is reached in other words once we reach 100 percent relative humidity then as it gets co even colder still because the ability of that parcel of air to hold that amount of water decreases further as donated by the grey boxes then precipitation forms for example precipitation in the form of dew drops, fog, rain, snow etc. In other words as we decrease the temperature when the amount of water which that parcel of air is able to hold becomes less than the actual amount of water in the atmosphere then water droplets form condensation, rain, snow, etc. This graph here this graph shows the amount of water which can be held in a parcel of air at different temperatures we can see that as we increase the temperature the amount of water which can be held by the atmosphere increases in fact if you look here if we were to increase the temperature from 15 degrees to 25 degrees so increase the temperature by 10 degrees centigrade we almost get a doubling in the amount of water that this parcel of air can hold so we almost increase the amount of water which this parcel can hold by two times if we increase the temperature by 10 degrees centigrade from 15 degrees to 25 degrees likewise if we were to decrease the temperature the amount of water which that parcel of air would be able to hold would also decrease so if the air were moist uh, there would be rain or dew or some form of precipitation now it's from our understanding of humidity that we can understand the part water vapor in the atmosphere plays on global warming Generally, scientists like to look at water vapour as a feedback mechanism. In fact, if there were no water vapour in the atmosphere, global warming probably wouldn't be such a big problem. Not only is water vapour a better absorber of long-wave radiation, but there is also ten times as much water vapour in the atmosphere as there is carbon dioxide. In other words, water vapour is a very, very effective greenhouse gas. Let's have a look at why scientists like to call water vapour a feedback mechanism. If we draw a graph, and on the left here we have water vapour,
and on the bottom here we have temperature we know that as you increase the temperature the amount of water vapor in the atmosphere increases now we have already established that carbon dioxide CO2 causes an increase in temperature causes the planet to warm up and this increase in temperature means that more water vapor can enter the atmosphere and because water vapor is a greenhouse gas the extra water vapor entering the atmosphere will also heat up planet earth some more so in fact water vapor amplifies the temperature increase which would otherwise be caused just by carbon dioxide water vapor is an amplifier of the temperature increase so just to repeat carbon dioxide causes the earth to warm and because the earth is warming it means the atmosphere can hold more water vapor and because water vapor is a greenhouse gas this causes further warming but it's important to realize that carbon dioxide is the trigger for this process if one were to try and increase the water vapor content of the atmosphere without increasing the temperature first then the additional water vapor in the atmosphere would just get rained out for example if we say that the temperature of planet earth at the moment is 15 degrees centigrade then this here would be the corresponding water vapor level if we were to try and increase this water vapor level at 15 degrees centigrade all that happens is it would rain uh, the water vapor content would go down again right back to this original level however if global warming for example caused a temperature increase of let's say one degree centigrade so from 15 to 16 degrees then this increase in temperature would in fact result in an increase in the amount of water vapor and this increase in the amount of water vapor because water vapor is a greenhouse gas would also further increase the temperature causing more global warming this increase in uh, water vapor content of the atmosphere could come from um, for example the oceans seas rivers lakes and uh, also wet soil uh, through the process of evaporation okay I, I hope you have understood that I'll see you next lesson bye